thank you. Uh, <laughs> so I had to do that because That's I think fine. when we have achievements, we should, we should ultimately um, celebrate them and be proud of them. And I think it's really awesome that mm. you are here to share with us a little sure. bit more about why is it important for us in our organizations to employ more young people? Mm. Well, young people are dynamic. Okay. Young people <laughs> see the world differently. And like I said earlier, we shouldn't try and manage them. Okay. Because that's where we go wrong. Um, we see the world differently. And in essence, we could add a lot of value if you know how to work with us instead mm. of managing us. Okay. <laughs> I just want to stay, as to share sure. a little bit more forward because I, I know we can't see us in the darkness. Mm. So the idea is you talk about not managing young people. What does that mean? Well, I can tell you a little bit about my journey okay. um, because, yes, I did work for an investment bank. Mm -hmm. It only lasted two years. So I did my, I studied at Wits University. Um, my, uh, well, my majors were in oper operational management, I think. You know, even now I don't even know what I'm qualified <laughs> as. But then I was given an opportunity to um, work at Investec, which is an investment bank or a bank. And... I, only, I was there as an intern, so I was part of the graduate internship program. I only lasted 18 months. It was an 18-month stint, but as a young person at that point in time, working for Investec was the glory of our lives, right? It's a beautiful bank, you know, it's in Santon, and everybody looks beautiful. You know, the men and the women dressed to the nines, and they're smart, important people that deal with money. So for any young person, it was like, this is a dream. This, I've arrived. Yep. Um, but that dream... Not that it got shattered 18 months later, but I just felt that as a young person, that is, I'm not a good numbers person. Mm -hmm. I could do the basics. Um, I felt a bit out of place. Wow. I okay. felt that I had ideas of how things should be done. Because if you're coming in at nine to five, you know, you're told when you can have tea, when you can go for lunch, what kind of work are you supposed to do? And it's very, very difficult if you see the world differently. So that episode only lasted 18 months. It was not a nightmare because there's a lot of value in working for a bank or for an institution. Lots of networking, giving me the ability to know how to function in a professional context. How do I engage with clients? Mm. Which is stuff that now as an entrepreneur have really helped me because I see how I conduct myself and how I engage with clients. Mm. So for the past 10 years, because you know, I was at Investec at like, you know, when I was 23 years old and tomorrow I turn 35. So when I, met, when I turned 25, that's when I, I took that leap of faith. And the idea of staying into a corporate environment staying and having a secure job was actually much more frightening than going out into the wild, which is what I've done for the past 10 years. Um, and to date, I have a company, Furaha, as you said, it means happy in Swahili. And we are a company that does outsourced HR. So we, we do recruitment, we do skills development, and we also do employee benefits. I didn't study HR, but I leverage an opportunity in the market because I'm young, I'm smart, I have great networks, and I have a listed company that says, let's work together because we want to transform. And transformation might have meant we need more black managers in our environment. But no, transformation was saying, take somebody who's been an entrepreneur for the past eight years. Mm. Get to work with her, work with her. And don't try control her or try tell her what she needs to do. And to date, our company, you know, has, we employ six people turning over more than 10 million rands. Sure. And tomorrow I turn 35, so I believe there's a lot to celebrate. I think we should celebrate now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and in essence, looking back 10 years ago, if I did not take that leap of faith, I would, be, I would not be here. That's just the reality. I'll be behind a desk. I'll be told what to do between nine to five. But there is an opportunity for HR practitioners to, 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 to identify that talent and not to suppress it because had somebody within the bank realize that actually she's right. Actually, the way in which she wants to do things is different from how we see things. Okay. And I could have been able to evolve within that bank and also add value yeah. because um, you know, young people do have their own ways of doing things. It's how do we contain them? Because perhaps we can um, you know, nurture them into a different kind of role and not what we foresee for them. Because yeah. millennials see the world differently, like I've been saying. I don't like working in an office environment. You know, if somebody had to say, Matsi, from nine to five, sit here and do this, I'll kill myself, I'll slit my wrists. We have two offices, one in Santon, one in Parktown. 
I'm never at the office. You know, I have people that work at the office, but my best office is at home, okay, in so my bedroom. Yeah, I'm just, I just want to interject here because I think, sure. Matsy, you are an anomaly. You <laughs> are a young individual who's, dis who's decided this doesn't work for me, so mm -hmm. let me change it. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. very few people out there need to go and sit at a desk. Mm. How do you then train or redirect that kind of free spirit of wanting to be more or not wanting to sit at a desk? Because yeah. we know that we need millennials in our workforce. Mm, mm, so mm. how do we get them to want to stay? What can we do as H HR mm. um, professionals to make them want to stay in our organizations, yeah, yeah. to get them truly invested in why they are there, what they are doing, mm. and how they con can contribute? You know what I mean? One question you should ask, what do you want? Not, this is what you're doing today. But what happens if they say, I want to get to work at 10. And I want to leave at 3. Now, now, now this is, I'm, I'm just Bet being... Between 10 and 3, as long as it's clear that this is my expectation of what you're supposed to deliver, how do you deliver it is beyond me. That's why I say, I don't like going to the office. And the kind of young people that are employed in my organizations are ones that you just know what you need to do. I don't care if you stay up till midnight, you start at six o'clock in the evening until midnight, and the rest of the day you probably don't do anything, um, as long as it's done, do you think it's about then, delivery. Do you think then that the world of work hasn't changed? We haven't evolved to now, I mean, you, you're saying we mustn't manage millennials, but now, are you, I'm just, I'm just asking. You're being the devil's advocate, I'm I understand. The, I love that. <laughs> do you think then that we need to work around what their needs are so that we can get the value of having millennials in our organization? Because I do want to be around young people. I do want to be around dynamic, but, but there's, a, there's, a, there's a price to pay then mm. if mm. Their, their vision is completely different to mine. Sure, I think it has to be aligned as to, let's say you're my boss. It has to be aligned as to what you need out of me. Okay. So that has to be clarified. Expectations must be managed, but don't tell her this is now at 10 o'clock you go for tea for 15 minutes. Don't tell them that. You know, just say at the end of the day, this is what I expect for you to be done, right? So know. This is my time frame okay. because this is when we need to have this thing done. Yeah. But as to how they do it, if they come in at 7 o'clock in the morning and decide to leave at 3 o'clock, yeah. if they come in at 10 o'clock and decide to leave at 10 o'clock, allow that flexibility because we are so rigid and millennials don't like rigid environments. Wow. When I see an office, I cringe. When I have my meetings with clients, it's normally at a coffee shop or an environment, like even at the office, there's a cafeteria downstairs. I'm not gonna take them upstairs. Mm. We're gonna have the chat downstairs, unless obviously we have to work on certain things. So it's important for HR practitioners to start being more agile and understanding that we're dealing with young people. The workforce is now becoming younger. You know, 50% of the workforce is going to be more now, I think in the next two years, are going to be young people. How do we manage us? Mm. And also, like I said, the word manage just sounds like, you know, you need to be yeah. managed. We don't like that. <laughs> well, I, like sometimes you don't have a choice. No, no I'm sometimes I'm you don't. I'm, I, I consider myself fairly woke. I used this yesterday, I'm trying to relate to all the young people out there. Normally when they do that, they go, wow, woo, she's so relevant. Yeah. Clearly not today, um, but that's okay. <laughs> no, you're very relevant. <laughs> I'm just curious, why are you holding your phone? Now this is the older generation in me. I'm just wondering if you're gonna pull out a moment where you're gonna do a selfie of the audience. I was gonna take a selfie with the audience. Ah, how did I know you were gonna do that? After this, I'm but... so relevant, so I'm sorry to preempt that no, for you. you. No, but no, you're there think, already. You, but I think what this really displays is how different maybe we do think yeah, how yeah. different are your expectations and my expectations and and I must just add there isn't much in terms of age difference correct just so you know no I'm kidding but anyway maybe <laughs> not. but it's just these different objectives there's different outcomes that I would want there's yeah. I mean is the belief that that young Millennials are people who just flit around from job to job is that is that in your research is that is that a prevalence yeah thing? so what i started as at a bank at the bank is different to what i'm doing now i mean i didn't study hr but i'm running a company that does hr because i'm able to leverage people's skills i'm able to understand that i can't necessarily do it because i'm not experienced in it but i know how to spot opportunity so that's where the entrepreneurial thing comes in but then in a work environment is Understand people, as much as you have something on paper, because yeah. I did BCom, I'm terrible at numbers. And I was also quite bad when people would measure my, you know, before you start a job, they do those tests, what psychometric tests, <laughs> I hate those. 
They are a poor reflection of my ability as a person. And anybody that gets me to do that and reads will probably see a different story than what's standing in front of you. So that's always the worst way of trying to fit people into a box and say, well, if you get this wrong, then you're not made for this. It's like, well, if I had to rely on what was on a psychometric test, I would have not been able to do what I'm doing. So what, how I interview people and engage with people before they start you know, working for me, I have a conversation. Mm. I want to understand who are they? What are their passions? I mean, one of the guys that I'm um, interviewing now, he's like, he loves cooking. You know, it's like when I see him and he's wearing his suit, you would never say mm. that this guy loves cooking and he likes cooking for his family and friends. So there are different ways in which you can test my ability. It's not based yeah. on what I pass on. I mean, if I had to show you my transcript from Wits University, you'd be shocked. It was not that pleasant. And I was very, very lucky to have gotten the opportunity at, um, at Investec within yeah. the internship. But it's because when they had a conversation with me, they're like, she's actually quite a smart person. She's very confident and she do very well here. So we need to start adjusting the way in which we see people as the value that they could add in organizations. I think what's really coming out is we need to do this with pretty much everybody not just young, younger people. Because yeah. I would love it if somebody said to me, so Jeanette, what do you really like? What can you incorporate? How can you do this differently? And I think it's about, as I said earlier, it's changing the dynamic within our workplaces. Mm, it's mm. about having these conversations, building this relationship. It's, it shouldn't be about my age also. I also don't want millennials to discriminate against me and say she's trying to relate <laughs> to us young people. I want to be part of the con conversation. Is, so I want to bridge that gap between mm. the, the, the two the two, I don't know, two groups. Worlds. The, two, yeah, the, the, groups, two, yeah. the two worlds, essentially. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just so wonderful if we can get that, that collaborative yeah. team energy and spirit mm -hmm. to, for, them, for us to recognize that we can learn from each other. Now, is this huge for you? Like, do you, do you impart that information to new young people going into organizations? How do you prep them for the world at work? Today. So normally by the time I'm done speaking to young people in the corporate environment, I've already convinced them to start their own businesses. So it's always <laughs> a bit of a danger. Or when corporates invite me to speak at their companies, you know, I'm, I'm expressing my journey. Okay, I used to work. Don't bring her again. Don't bring her again. She's going to convince everybody to quit the next day. But I think there's just a lot to be learned because awesome. sometimes young talent, they just need to be unearthed. Yeah. Somebody needs to say that this is not everything. And also within a corporate environment, you can be an entrepreneur. Yeah. So within an, an, a yeah. corporate environment, we call them entrepreneurs because Love it. they are inside. But then also the whole thing of social media, you know, older people would say, but you're sitting on Facebook and Instagram and you shouldn't be posting, you're exposing yourself and exposing your life. Most of my clients and probably the reason why the organizers of this conference know about me is because I'm on social media. You know, of course you have to curate your message. You can't be half naked and want people to take you seriously as a businesswoman, right? So you have to curate the way in which you do it because you have an idea. But I just feel that older people should stop discouraging young people from being on social media because that's where the world is. Um, I'm not even gonna say that's where the world is going, yeah, but yeah, yeah, everything it's... is on the palm of your hands. Pretty much. And I think I love, love what you said, because for those of us, we don't have the luxury to, to leave our, our, our desks. But I think what, what you really inspiring want to do is to have multiple income streams. Mm. So we can have our 95 job. But we can also have something you know, on the side that can generate more cash, that can motivate us, that can... Because at the end of the day, work it should not define us. Mm. That's one facet of mm. our personality. Mm. And I think sometimes, you know, if we, we're spending, once again, 80% of our time at work, we need to mm. make that space conducive, yes. fun, interactive, um, obviously not too much fun. You know what fun I'm talking about, <laughs> professional fun. Um, that sounded wrong as well, but anyway, <laughs> so it's, it's about yeah. just, yeah, just finding what makes us happy. Yeah. And once again, I don't even know if it's about you do this because you're younger, I do this. It's just an understanding. Correct. So, Correct. so would you encourage more open conversations amongst uh, older generations, like the baby boomers, which yeah. are much older than me, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and how they connect with the younger? Uh, what do you do? Would you have like a... A workshop a around, sit together, yeah, sit you know, down. let's so all what sing you Kumbaya. <laughs> but you know, I like, I like your thing that you spoke about, you know, um, young people having different income streams. So the mistake that is made is we call it moonlighting, right? 
So the professionals in the office would say you're moonlighting because you know, you've got your job, you should be focusing on that, but we know that you're up to something. You've been speaking to people. I think we shouldn't see it as a negative thing. Okay. We should obviously guide them in doing it properly because you should not be utilizing your corporate uh, resources to be doing to do your that. job. That yeah. is wrong. But you should be saying, if you're passionate about something, if you're a yoga instructor and after you know, hours you go out and you go be in yoga, encourage that. Yeah. But the minute you say young people or these people within our environment are moonlighting, it looks like it's a negative thing. Yeah. And now you're not allowing people to think bigger and think broader. And, we need and also, to. I mean, a lot of people, when they start their businesses, you want to start it as you're working. You know, when that idea, it's like, actually, I've seen this opportunity in the market. The idea is going to come as you're working. And you are encouraged to work safe so that by the time you have now decided you're going to leave, you would have had some savings. Um, so let's not frame like, like what I said earlier on around, let's not manage young people. Let's enable them. Mm. Because the minute you say we're managing you, it looks like, okay, there's a teacher and there's a child and now I'm being told well, what to do. Well, it's a dictatorial leadership correct, style. Correct. And I, I don't think anybody likes that. So are you saying that millennials... They are averse to that kind of style. Yeah, the minute like, somebody tells me what to do, I just switch off. And just curious, <laughs> all the millennials in the room, is that how you would respond as well? Right? <laughs> that we just switch off? It's just switch off. You're just like, okay, fine. I just need to pay the bills. Goodbye. Let me just do what I'm told to do. Okay. But not like, let me see this as an opportunity. They care. They want to enable me. They are encouraging for me to think bigger and think broader. Okay, so it's about, once again, people skills. It's about tapping into what you want, obviously your strengths. Mm -hmm. um, where do we draw the line though? What, what, what rules of engagement should we as HR professionals use? Because as we said, there are some things that are non-negotiables. Yeah, oh no, of what, course. What, like in your, in your world, because I, I don't know now. Mm. Like how do I engage with a millennial? I mustn't say to them, get off your phone or what are you <laughs> doing? Or yeah, are you allowed to be on your phone at work? Because I don't know if that's a... Uh, no, that's so I mean, I have a couple of young people that work for me and I'm quite selfish with my time. So when I feel like you are distracted, I then just say, but hang on, you're on your phone the whole time. Um, so I think what's important is that your expectation as the manager has to be clear, mm. right? And that's why I tend not to be in the office environment too long yeah. to see that somebody's on her phone. But I know that even as remote as I am, this is my expectation. Yeah. What you do between the time you're at the office, I don't care. Okay, but that, that's as long as it's thinking. done. That's very forward as thinking. As long as it's done, because yeah. once it's not done, then we have problems. Do you think that we can be distracted and not do our job whilst being on social media? Excuse me. It, no, social media is generally distracting. So Even for me personally, I'm not perfect. And I know that the amount of time, I, I think I see a couple of people that are on my social media feed and I'm always on Instagram. If you want, the most instant response, <laughs> just DM me on Instagram. I'll respond instantly. Okay, but now obviously within organizations, there are rules. Correct. So if we, if we say don't go on f Facebook, or don't, mm, I know, mm. sorry, Facebook is such an old person's yeah, thing. Yeah. Uh, no, it's um, not. No, apparently it is. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Um, but if we don't go on social media while you're at work, is, is that a, a non-negotiable? Uh, do we, I mean, well, I'm just curious, how many people, now you don't want to out yourself, <laughs> Who thinks that going on social media is actually not okay at work? No one. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> I, I'm, Point I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I really oh, there's am. one lady there. <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> I, I'm flabbergasted. And they're both wearing red. <laughs> you know, the reality is we won big science experiment. We don't know the impact of social media. We don't yeah. know the impact correct, of correct. how it's actually distracting us. Mm. And I think the millennials are the people who are, in, interestingly enough, are going to be showing my generation how we need to manage social media consumption. Mm. Because I think you guys are already aware yeah. of the impact of too much. It's more on the micro, no macro, not the micro. That's why I was saying at the end of the day, it's about managing your expectation. Because yeah, okay. as a leader, as a boss in the office, you have to express your authority, not exercise it. And by expressing your authority is just setting those parameters and saying, happy for us to get you to do this. How you do it is beyond me. If you need guidance, I'm here. Yeah. So that's my leadership sure. style, and I get the most out of it because people don't feel like I'm breathing down their necks. Like, what are you doing? Wow. What are you reading? Why are you on your phone? 
That's why I removed myself from that environment. And I mean, I haven't been to the Parktown office in probably a month. But Lisa every day sends me stuff. Lisa sends me WhatsApp. And she gets it done. She gets it done. And oh. if she needs my input, she knows I have to, she has to do it on WhatsApp because that's where I'm the quickest. Okay, well, clearly you're confident in your ability to recognize the strengths in others. Mm. You're confident that they will do what you would like them to do. You're not right. a dictator. We know this. Uh, I try um, not to be. Yeah. yeah. And you're somebody who encourages individuality, mm. but also um, just uh, people who are wanting to be in that space. So yeah. that's really encouraging. And you've given me a... a a greater understanding yeah. of how to, to interact with millennials. I do have my parameters though. I mean, it's very clear what Lisa can do or what she can't do, yeah, okay. how she needs to conduct herself with clients. So in those kind of things, I have to play more of a nurturing, mentoring Coaching thing. Role, you yeah. don't chew bubble gum while you're speaking to my clients. Okay, good. So and they are she standards. Would, and she would say, but Matsi, it's not your clients, it's our clients. Like, you're right, Lisa, it is our clients. <laughs> Right? So also being able to get constructive feedback from her. That's really awesome. Yeah. And that just shows that you're somebody who's confident and self-confident and you're not going to take it personally. No. So really inspiring. Let's give you that opportunity to take a selfie with the group. If I'll go down there mind. so that I can be in it as well. But I think it'll be really awesome because two faces in the pic won't. Awesome.